So once you are in your Microsoft Teams meeting, you have some options that are very similar to your popular or your other type of virtual meeting platforms like Zoom or Google Meet. You'll notice in this area right here is where you can share your screen or where you will see someone else speaking. In the right hand corner, you have some options and these are really your host options, your host controls. So if I click the first option, my little people icon, I can either hide or show my participants. Over here next to that, I have my conversation area so I can hide or show my chat. We get some hand raise and some heart or applause options similar to Zoom. And then I can also facilitate breakout rooms in Microsoft Teams. We have a video about that. And then your three dots, that equals more options. So if you want any additional options, you'll click on more options and you get a variety of different things that you can modify within your Microsoft Teams meeting. So you have, of course, your device settings, which this allows you to modify or select which speaker, microphone, or camera to use. You have your call health, just to kind of ensure that you don't have any static key items going on and everything's good to go with your audio. You have some additional meeting options, which allows you to allow users to buy, lose, users, excuse me, to bypass the lobby, announce whenever they leave, etc. You can modify all of these options as the host. And then you can, of course, have some meeting notes just to kind of help yourself stay organized. Further down, you have your view. So if you have a large meeting, you can change it from gallery to large gallery. And then, of course, modify it to the full screen. You can apply background effects. You can turn on live captions, which is a really cool feature. And then here is where you can start recording. So when you click start recording, it will start recording. It will let your audience know as well as transcript what you're saying, which is really cool just as an extra accountability factor for yourself and for your students. And then if you want to stop recording, just go back to your three dots and click stop recording and it will confirm that you are sure you would like to stop recording click stop recording and your recording will be saved in the chat you'll see right here right now it's saving the recording and then once it's fully saved it will show up in the chat for yourself as well as for your participants to go back and review you can also download this recording by hovering over the recording and you have three dots if you hit open or get link, you're able to download and also share the recording or place it into your Google Classroom or on your website for your classroom. Going back to my three dots, I have additional extra options. I can, of course, turn off any incoming video. Some extra help options also are located under more options. Going back to my toolbar, I have my video option so I can show myself on my video if I would like to. You can, of course, blur your background as well as locate some additional background effects. Next to that, I have my mute and unmute button. Very simple. This one is very important. I think this is probably the second most used button besides the microphone or the camera button um, within a virtual meeting. It's your share uh, content or share screen button. So if I click on my share screen button, it gives you some options of how you would like to share your screen. Now, I always tell users, if you're going to share a video or any kind of audio, always ensure that you toggle this on. This will ensure that whatever audio you're sharing sounds crisp and sounds clear to the viewer or participant. And then I'm going to come here and I can either share my entire desktop screen. So whatever I pull up will be seen by the viewers or I can select the actual Chrome tab or window. Or I can just do a whiteboard. Maybe I only want to do a few math problems or have a whiteboard displayed. I can choose that. And you can also bruise, browse your computer or your OneDrive. So these are your different video options here. Next to my share options video, I do have the leave option. So you can just hit leave and it will remove you from the meeting. Um, but of course, if you're gone, people are still in the meeting. So be mindful of that. To completely close or end the meeting, next to the leave button, you have a drop down that allows you to end the meeting for everyone. I highly recommend if you're the host of the meeting and your meeting is over and you would like to close the door and lock the door on your meeting, you click end meeting so no one else can stay in the meeting once you're gone. Okay, so those are the menu admin options that you have as the host. 
So if I were to go to my participant list, I will see all of my participants located right here. If someone were to join my meeting and I have my waiting room installed, they will sit in my waiting room and as the admin, as the host, I will receive a notification that they're waiting in my waiting room. So there we go. I have a student right here and I can either admit or deny their access. If I admit them, they will be placed into my room and they now have access to my virtual meeting or to my virtual classroom lecture. I can hover over their name and I get some additional options hitting my three dots. I can pin them for myself so then I see them the full time. I can spotlight them for everyone in my meeting. So maybe they're presenting a presentation or maybe they are currently the main person talking and I want everyone's attention on that one speaker. If I hit spotlight for everyone, they will be spotlighted and made large for everyone in my meeting. I can make them an attendee. So right now they are a co-host or I can remove them from my meeting. So if they maybe are in the incorrect room or maybe they're disrupting your lesson, you can remove them from the meeting. Of course, you can mute them. If they were not muted, you could mute them, but you cannot unmute a student due to privacy issues or a participant due to privacy. You can come here and share your invite. So if you wanted to click share invite, it gives you the option to copy the meeting link. So if I click on copy meeting link, I'm able to now go to my Google Classroom or go to my Canvas course or go to my website that I have and copy and paste this link into that platform for them to access on a daily function. All right, and then going to my chat, you'll see that the chat is very similar to all things and you have a lot of options. It does show you whenever someone joins your meeting, so that's great. And then further down is where you'll type in your message. So if I just type in the word test, it pops up right there. Users can, of course, react to that message so they can like it or they can heart it or laugh at it, <laughs> up to them. And then down here, you get a, a, some extra options with your chat. You can insert emojis, GIFs, or change the font or the overall style of your chat message. So you can modify those options. And just simply type in your message. Either hit the enter on your keyboard or you can click the arrow pointing to the right. And there you go. So as you can see, Microsoft Teams is a very similar platform. To me, it is much more comprehensive and user friendly for classroom teachers, but it is very similar to your favorite platform. If you love Zoom or if you love Google Meet, there are a lot of similarities between those platforms and Microsoft Teams. Thank you.